Monday, but Tuesdays feel the same. It was bitterly cold yesterday on a Monday, January the 30th, and now here we are on January the 31st, and it is equally cold. But you know what? Wherever you're listening to this podcast at, and wherever I'm, wherever I am coming to you from, we are blessed to be able to feel the cold. So this is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it, cold and all. Rejoice in it. So today we're going to be starting with the new series, Where Do I Begin? Getting to Know Jesus. Sometimes we have to take it back to the beginning. As the Bible declare, go back and do your first works over, amen? So today, starting a long journey, where do I begin getting to know Jesus? Today's background scripture is coming out of Luke chapter 1, verse Verse 22, 11 through 22. So let's just go ahead and dive into this word and dive into the first installment of where do I begin getting to know Jesus? Luke chapter 1, coming from the Christian Standard Bible version. An angel of the Lord appeared to him standing to the right of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was terrified and, over, and overcome with fear. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah, because your prayer has been heard. Your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son, and you will name him John. There will be joy and delight for you, and many will rejoice at his birth. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord and will never drink wine or beer. He will be filled with the Holy Spirit while still in his mother's womb. He will turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God, and he will go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of fathers to their children and the disobedient to the understanding of the righteous to make ready for the Lord a prepared people. How can I know this? Zechariah asked the angel. Since for I am an old man and my wife is well along in years. The angel answered him, I am Gabriel, who stands in the presence of God, and I was sent to speak to you and tell you this good news. Now listen, you will become silent and unable to speak until the day these things take place because you did not believe my words, which will be fulfilled in their proper time. Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah, amazed that he stayed so long in the sanctuary. When he did come out, he could not speak to them. Then they realized that he had seen a vision in the sanctuary. He was making signs to them and remained speechless. Today, we're going to talk about ordinary people. Answer this. When was the last time you've been discouraged and felt like you didn't have anything to offer anyone? So after walking into the temple to perform his duties as a priest, Zechariah encounters an angel named Gabriel, who had a message for him from God. Angels can be pretty intimidating. Throughout the Bible, men would tremble at their sight. This explains, for, explains why the first thing angels often said when appearing to someone was, do not fear. Zechariah's encounter was no exception. As he stood shaking in his boots, Gabriel tells him not to be afraid. Gabriel then tells Zechariah that God has reminded him, which is interesting because the name Zechariah means the Lord has remembered. Then Gabriel tells him he's going to be a father. Now, it is interesting that we are in the New Testament 
in the book of Luke. And it seemed like this story has played out before. Anybody remember the story of Abraham and Sarah? And once again, it was an angel that came and gave the news that Abraham and Sarah was going to bear a son. But you want to know what else is interesting? There was also some scoffing and some unbelief. But we'll get into that. He would be no ordinary father, though. Zechariah would be the father of John the Baptist. And John the Baptist would later turn people back to the Lord their God. Zechariah's son was going to introduce people to someone who would change their hearts and forever change the course of history. It was astonishing news, to say the least. I imagine it was also astonishing to Abraham and Sarah as well, too. Because the same thing John said was the same thing Abraham and Sarah had said. Zechariah had prayed for years to have a child. Now, here, here it is right here. In his old age, he's being told by an angel that he'll have a son. On top of that, he was going to have a son with a woman who was long past her childbearing years. Now you really get to stopping and thinking, how can this be so? I'm an old man, and this woman is just as old as I am, way past her childbearing years. Does this not sound like Abraham and Sarah? Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do before I conclude this. I'm going to take a break. And when I come back, I will definitely bring this to a conclusion. So stay tuned to In the Daily Word of God with Anthony. I will be back for the conclusion of this devotion. back to In the Daily Word of God with Anthony as we get ready to wrap up this devotion talking about ordinary people. Ordinary people. So we learned that in that first segment that Zechariah had an encounter with the Lord. With an angel. And the angel gave him some news there before we went to the break that he was going to be a father and that his son's name was going to be John, John the Baptist. And John was going to do some things. John was going to lead, basically lead some people to Christ. And this Savior was going to change their life and the course of history forever. But the news didn't quite set well with Zechariah, kind of like it didn't set well with Abraham and Sarah. So much so, if you remember the story about Abraham and Sarah, how Abraham got impatient and wanted to do God's work. You know, isn't it funny how God tells us something? And we, we know God is a... Is, he, he, he's a man that he cannot lie, nor should he have to repent. But yet, we doubt God, and I say we, because we all deal with doubt from one time to the other. And then, when God doesn't move in a certain time, according to our time frame, we like to uh, try to do his work. 
can I tell you something? We can't do God's work. We can barely do our own work, let alone try to do his work. But yet we have seen God make prom promise of something and has kept his promise in our lives. We just have to develop some patience and let him do. Matter of fact, some writer said like this, my daddy used to sing this song. He says, you can't hurry God. You have to trust him and give him time. He said, he may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. So when Zachariah expressed doubt about whether he and his wife could have a child together, Gabriel is offended. Hmm, imagine that. Gabriel is offended that the good news he just delivered is received with disbelief. So Gabriel scolds Zechariah and disciplines him by temporarily taking away his ability to speak. See, be careful. Now, this, this, this is the angel of the Lord that's offended by Zechariah's unbelief. But let me pose this question. How many times do we offend the Lord God by not believing him and, and doubting his word. Something to think about. So Zechariah got in trouble because he doubted God. In essence, questioning, how could God possibly use my wife and me? When I said earlier about doing God's work, if you remember, Abraham and his impatient decided to have a child with his maid and it caused friction in the home. Sometimes when we try to do God's work, it causes friction in the home and in the body of Christ because now we're out of order with God's plan. So once again, Zechariah got in trouble because he doubted God. In essence, question how could God possibly use my wife and me? The Bible is full of stories about God's crazy ability to use unlikely people to do extraordinary things. And so are our history books. People like Abraham Lincoln, raised in poverty, multiple political failures, 16th U.S. president, Harriet Tubman, born into slavery, escaped E. Rescue of over 300 slaves and Rosa Parks, department store seamstress, bus passenger, igniter of the civil rights movement, were used to accomplish great things in spite of their otherwise ordinary lives. God accomplishes great things through ordinary people to remind us he deserves credit for anything we accomplish. So what does this mean for me? We shouldn't get discouraged about our perceived lack of abilities, opportunities, or achievements because no one is too ordinary for God to use. Nor should we brag about what we do have because every talent we possess, every success we attain, and every opportunity we're given comes only from our Heavenly Father. So what I want to do is close us out in prayer Lord God I want to thank you for allowing me to be a vessel to be used by you to spread this word this morning letting us reminding us that you use ordinary people not no one with great titles not no one in high positions but ordinary people like me and those who are listening to this podcast and Lord thank you for reminding us that anything that we accomplish is because of you and that all we have to do is just be in the way for you to use us. Thank you for this the day that you have made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Give us the strength to make it throughout this day. Let us be a light for you said in your word. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. Glorify the Father which is in heaven. These and other blessings we ask in the mighty name of Jesus and all those who listen said amen, amen, and amen. Once again, ordinary people, I want to thank you for listening to this podcast. If it's a blessing to you, don't just hoard it up for yourself. Share it. Let it be a blessing to someone else. Until the next time, as I always say, I got this from a friend of mine sitting on her voicemail. Be blessed. 
and be a blessing. Until the next time.